Over the decades, Craftsman has offered a variety of attachments and accessories for their drill presses. This video is the second in a series of videos that will cover many of these attachments and accessories. Hello, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the head and table lift. So let's get started. So you are the proud owner of a Craftsman 15 and a half inch drill press. However, your everyday operation with that drill press, you are constantly raising and lowering the table on the drill press to fit whatever you're working on. And after a while that becomes tedious. What if there was a device that could just lift or lower the table by cranking a handle? requiring very little effort on your part. That's what the Atlas Press Company came up with back when they were still manufacturing drill presses for craftsmen before King Sealy stepped in. And the item that they invented was called the head and table lift. It was designed to either lift the head and motor or to lift the table. Once again, I've asked my friend Paul to do a short video and explain the head and table lift to us and I hope you enjoy it. Hi my name is Paul and I am a friend of Jeff's. This is for Jeff's shop. We'll be doing a video on the Craftsman head and table lift. The first appearance of the Craftsman head and table lift is here in the 1941 Craftsman catalog. At this time of the Craftsman drill press evolution, all the full size 15 inch drill presses were made by the Atlas company. So the lift will only fit the two and three quarter inch outside diameter columns. It was natural for Atlas to make the lift for Craftsman as they were at that time making their drill presses. Here's a page from the 1943 Atlas catalog and there you can see the lift in the upper right corner. And the last mention of it in a Craftsman catalog is here in the 1959 catalog despite the fact that the Craftsman 100 and 150 ran until 1966. So the lift was available for all but the last seven years of the 100 and 150 drill press run. Here's one off the column. Those handles should look familiar to anyone with a 1940s Craftsman drill press. They came in two different colors, a darker blue-gray and a lighter blue-gray and here you can see the comparison. Like so many things from Craftsman in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, there are quirks. So the patent number you see so proudly displayed on the gearbox for the most part appeared where you see it now. But there are examples where it appears on the opposite side and it's unknown why that happened but it did. Since we are discussing the patent this is what it covers aspects of the lift mechanism. It was applied for in March of 1941 and as you can see it was granted in October 1941. So we're on the same page uh, in the next segment with the breakdown we'll call this the upper collar or gearbox the lower collar and the threaded rod this is a massive three-quarter inch threaded rod Acme thread and here are the gears the remainder are the lock handles the handle and there are two locking collars on this and a thrust bearing. Let's break it down. Here is my backup lift. Um, the darker one is on my drill press. 
here you can see the lower collar and note inside here that only half this shaft is threaded and the other half is smooth. I have always mounted it on the column with the threaded side up. Acme threads. Just a solid piece of American made steel. Turning the threaded rod moves the gears inside. As you can see, the handle rotate. Here I am removing the 7 16 inch screws. When I pull the handle faceplate off the gearbox here, you'll be able to see how the gears would mesh. Here we go. There they are. One thing I've never gotten over, I don't know why they did this, but those gears are made of die cast Zamek, um, a type of pot metal. And I'm not sure why they decided to do that, but they did. Continuing the disassembly, this lock collar captures the bottom of the lower gear, as you'll be able to see soon. There is removal of the top lock nuts and underneath those lock nuts is a thrust bearing. I will explain why that thrust bearing is on top instead of in the gearbox as it came. There you see it's a nice bearing made in Philadelphia. Throughout the entire run all the thrust bearings were nice bearings from Philadelphia. So the threaded shaft pulls out, you saw a keyway, and there's the lower gear. So this is one piece of die cast metal, and the lower sleeve is wrapped with metal. And there's the key. This one is 100% intact, but quite often uh, portion has crumbled away and will be only half to three quarters intact. Here you see the threaded rod and that long keyway. And this is how the lower gear rides in that keyway with that long key that was inside the gear. And once that lower collar is on the bottom of that, it's very secure. That hole there is an oil port and you can see the two holes that the thread rod rides in. The casting on this all of them that I've run across, and uh, I've had seven, seem at times uh, pretty rough, especially on the back side. And here are the gears. Here's an image of them in Union. Yeah, that is what is lifting uh, 100 pounds of headstock and motor, those little die cast teeth. And as much as I poke fun at the fact that it's die cast, uh, these work. This looks like a before and after picture, but I have this side by side to explain the reason 
why I mount the thrust bearing on top of the gearbox as opposed to the original location that Craftsman put it, which was inside the gearbox. So here is where the thrust bearing originally came from Craftsman, and here is where I would recommend putting the thrust bearing. Years ago, Garage Journal member Frank Lee proposed a superior way to reassemble the lift so that the load could be carried far more efficiently by the gearbox thrust bearing. Now this method assumes the user will not use the lift to raise and lower the head, only the table. On the picture on the left, the thrust bearing is placed on top of the gearbox and held in place with a washer and two locking nuts. Now since raising and lowering the table means that the lift has all the weight carried below the gearbox, the maximum load in this configuration is carried by the thrust bearing. And on the image on the right, as it originally came from Atlas and Craftsman, the thrust bearing would be supporting the significantly heavier weight of a drill press head and motor, but only the washer and locking nuts are now carrying the load of the table. I know that's a mouthful, and if you're like me, you'll probably have to replay that about three times to understand what the heck I'm trying to say. Here it is on my own drill press. The upper collar. You can see I've got that thrust bearing mounted up there. The threaded shaft and the lower collar. You see it makes contact with the table because it lifts it up and lets it down. There's the handle for the lower collar and the handle for the upper collar. So here it is in operation. I have loosened the table handle and now I'm letting the table down. It's just a matter of cranking the handle. And even though it's still moving now, it's hard to see, but the, the lower collar is riding down on that threaded shaft and the table has gone down quite a bit. And then you lock the table. Boom. Done. Works great. One last thing I wanted to bring up is when you do grab a drill press with a lift on it, do not be alarmed at the condition of the lift. Here's one I grabbed about a year or two ago and you can see it looks pretty gnarly. That is the same lift that I have on my drill press now and look at this one this one looks pathetic and when you open up the gearbox it's like yikes what have I got myself into but a little bit of elbow grease and that same lift will look like that thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was informative I'll check periodically for questions and answer them when I can this has been a Jeff's Shop production. Thank you, Paul, for that overview. And if you are enjoying these uh, accessories and attachment series videos, let me know in the comments and we'll bring you more. So that should wrap up the number two video in this series and part three coming soon. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.